Hello and welcome to Grim 3D for this Modification Monday. I am going to be putting this aluminum carriage plate onto my Monoprice Maker Select Plus. Stick around. So for this modification, I've already got my Z carriage up as far as I, it will go. And I've got the power unplugged, trying to be safe with that. Um, I am going to try to go with the three bearing setup on the bottom of this, which uh, I know a lot of companies go with three bearing setups. And a lot of people say that it helps the carriage move more quietly and will still maintain a decent bed level uh, for your projects. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this top part of this bed with just these thumb screws. And this is a heated bed, so I want you to be careful with the wires. Once we've removed the heated bed screws, we notice that the heat bed wires go through a port in the heated bed, a hole in the heated bed, which means that we are going to have to remove the heated wires from underneath. So I'm just going to tip this sideways and we can take care of that. So on the Maker Select Plus, I'm going to have to remove this bottom cover. For that, I'm just using the Allen wrenches that came with the originally came with the Maker Select Plus. So carefully remove that. So then I can see that the wires from my heated bed are in this, this group right here. I'll have to carefully remove this zip tie with my flush cutters. I don't want to cut any of the wires seeing as how those are my stepper motor control wires. And then with a small screwdriver Loosen the connections. And unplug my temp sensor. Which is just in a two pin JST style connector. Pull those out. So they're free. I have one more zip tie right here to clip. And then carefully pull the wires out from underneath. and out through the hole in the carriage plate. Set the heated bed carefully aside. I have actually damaged a heated bed in the past uh, where one of the wires on the back got scratched enough to uh, create a break in continuity and then the heated bed would not heat up at all, which I fixed with a little bit of solder which worked pretty well for me. I'm going to have to remove my, this is my camera arm for my Octo lapse camera. I'll have to find another solution for that because the carriage plate that it's attached to will be thicker in the future, quite a bit thicker, which is the point. 
So then I'm going to go ahead and remove my bearings. And I, actually, I'm just removing the bearing carriages. Here, I'm going to do carefully. I'm going to leave the belt carriage for last, or the belt connector. Not sure what they call that. And last, I'm going to do the belt. I'm going to take it carefully with those. There we go. Number two. And the old carriage plate is free. If you'll notice, I'll hold these up. The thicknesses of these are decidedly different. The aluminum one is way more rigid and thicker uh, than this pressed sheet metal one. Uh, the pressed sheet metal one I've been using for about a year, but I've been noticing some problems with being able to level the bed properly. And so I purchased this. Um, this is a Lee Sun aluminum Y carriage. I'll put the link down in the video description. I just got it from Amazon. So, not a big deal, but uh, I want to set this up with two bearings on this side and one bearing on that side to try to create a quieter running machine. Um, <clears throat> the Prusa that I use, the Prusa Mark III that I use only has three bearings and it um, runs just fine. So I'm going to try three bearings on this. If the three bearings doesn't work, I will just pull it apart and go back to four bearings. Not a big deal. Um, hopefully I'll be able to let you know if it's working or not working, that kind of thing. So let's go ahead and start installing this by removing one of these bearings, which should be pretty easy. There's a set screw right there that holds the guide rod in. And then there are two Allen screws in the front. So I'll pull those. I'll have to undo that set screw in the back. Lift that up, move that out of the way, pull that bearing off, put this back, do up my set screw in the back again. Put in my screws that hold the bracket in. All these bearings seem pretty smooth. They run pretty good. Actually, it's kind of interesting. The bearing that I pulled off didn't actually run all that smooth. So uh, probably a good reason to pull it. I do have more of these bearings and, and these plastic carriages work pretty good that came with the machine. So I mean, I could replace this pretty easy if my three bearing setup doesn't work. So then I'm going to basically do the operation in reverse, starting with the belt. Carriage. That's way more flexible than the bearing carriages. So probably easier to line up. Put 
the holes with the carriage plate being free from the bearings. I generally try not to uh, tighten when I have multiple screws like this that need to go in to a plate or a solid area like this. I try not to tighten any of them right at first. You want to get all of your screws in place and marginally snug, I guess you could call it that, before tightening any of them down. Make sure everything's in alignment. Make sure all your screws have plenty of bite. Make sure that the plate is where it needs to be. All of that kind of stuff. So I put in the screws. And since I'm not tightening them, I just put them all in. Not really too much of a need for a pattern on this, I don't think. So one thing I want to make sure of before I tighten these down is that my belt runs straight. It's in the right place. I'm going to move my carriage back and forth slowly so that I don't get electricity generated off the stepper motor. Maybe bring my light around here so I can see down in there. That feels pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and tighten them down. We'll see. If it's not working in the near future, I'll just pull it apart and readjust. Now I can go ahead and put my heat bed back on, which I am going to Start by feeding the wires through my new carriage plate. I'm going to put on my springs. And then, of course, I got to lock it down at least a little bit so that I can flip the machine to reconnect the wires, the heat bed wires underneath. So I got my heated bed on there. It's looking pretty good. I'm going to start feeding my wires back down through the chassis. Not zip tying anything up here yet. But I am going to carefully pull these through. Being very careful with the JST connector. I do not I want to have to solder that back on if I don't have to. I'm going to feed this underneath these stepper motor wires because that's where it was before. Being very careful not to damage anything. And then these were underneath this bar. The JST connector for the temperature sensor was on those pins right there. Carefully, it's kind of a flexible board, so you got to be careful with that. The larger heat wires were in this green screw connector it's 
So we'll screw in the terminals again with enough tension but not enough to break it because remember it's plastic and the screws are very small. And now I think I'm ready to put my inner zip tie back on which was right here. Just try to get, I can kind of see with the wires where the zip tie was before. Just trying to get it back where it was. Clip the end of my flush cutters. Now I'm ready to put the base back on, the base cover. Once again, I'm not tightening them down because I want to get all of them in their respective locations first. And make sure everything is aligned properly before I put any tension on the screws. See that? I have an alignment issue right here. The ability to move that around allows me to line that last screw. Then I can go around and give these a good tighten. With the base back on, I am going to flip this back over and feed my zip tie clip the edge with flush cutters and there you have it an aluminum carriage plate installed with three bearings just that simple actually pretty easy upgrade thanks for watching uh, if you like what you see please subscribe I'd love to reach a wider audience with my YouTube channel and my upgrades as always please keep the comments civil I do read them all we'll see you out there <laughs>